Shalom Akim. I want to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Ba'ashim Yahweh Shai, Ba'ashim Rakar Kodash. Double honor to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone, and Shalom to the elect. The water Yahweh Ba'ashim Yahweh Shai for allowing me to do another lesson. Okay. And um, hey, the name Yahweh, the power of you tribes, you so called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. That's his name. The world might ignorantly call him God, but his real name is Yahweh. And his son, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ, is named Yahweh Shai. This lesson is going to be talking about how the RFID micro the RFID microchip is the mark of the beast. It's undeniable. The proof is out there. Okay. You can just do a quick Google search. Okay. Which I had did before. Let me see. You could actually just do a quick Google search on humans. Microchips and humans. Okay. Which one did I watch? Let's just see. For example, this one. The president wants the market to go up headed into November. And now that Pfizer has announced. Take back ownership of your identity. Be in control of the technology. It's definitely the next natural step. People think more on, okay, what is my value? Why aren't I getting a cut? You can sell your data, which makes up a lot of value. Thank you. My name is Johan Estelund, and I do implants for humans. Tech goes into the body to enhance and optimize. Chip implants are tiny glass capsules with circuitry in them. You put it under your skin, it can pretty much replace anything you have in your wallet. Bundling them up gives you an edge. If you're a bit forgetful. Smart integration. It's the future of technology and it's awesome. <laughs> what makes them important for us is owning the digital identity. You see? And as you see, there's many more articles, many more videos pushing the RFID chip. Look, USA Today, this came out in 2017. You will get chipped eventually. Because today, even a brother, um, I was finished watching a brother's video, GMS Watchman. He did a video on how 80% of stability banks. And modern All right. Meaning these top banks around the world are considering digital currencies. Okay. So, on top of that, there's an article. I'm gonna this article right here. I want to get into because this proves without a doubt that the RFID chip is the mark of the beast. So it says here are excerpts from an article published in July in the June July. 1994 issue of Nexus, Mapleton, Queensland, 4560, Australia. It is the testimony of Dr. Carl W. Sanders, who was in charge of conceiving the microchip. Dr. Sanders is an electronic engineer, inventor, author, and consultant to various government organizations, as well as to IBM, General Electric, Honeywell, and Teledyne. 32 years of my life was spent designing engineering and electronics, designing microchips in the biomed field. In 1968, I became involved almost by accident in a research and development project in regard to a spinal bypass for a young lady who had severed her spine. 
They were looking at possibly being able to connect motor nerves, etc. It was a project we were all excited about. There were 100 people involved and I was senior engineer in charge of the project. The project culminated in the microchip that we talk about now. A microchip that I believe is going to be the positive identification and the mark of the beast. All right, this guy, Dr. Carl W. Sanders himself writes that he believes that it's the mark of the beast. Okay, working on the microchip, we had no idea about it ever being an identification chip. We looked at it as being a very humanitarian thing to do. You know, and it's going to show you that. These devils, their heart, their hearts are deep. You know, because here it is, he's looking at it as a, you know, he just said a humanitarian thing to do, a thing to help uh, society, not knowing that these elites, the ones who gave, you know, his boss's boss, have a bigger plan, have a bigger scheme and plan. Our team was made up of people out of San Jose, people off, out of Motorola, General Electric, Boston Medical Center. It was quite a group of people. As the chip began to evolve, there came a time in a project when they said that the financial return on bypassing several spines is not a very lucrative thing for us to be into. So we really need to look at some other areas. We noticed that the frequency of the chip had a great effect upon behavior. And so we begin to branch off and look possibly at behavioral modification. Okay. They're not that devil. Um, Elon Musk said his chip. Why you should get his chip? Why? Because you can control your, uh, your moods, your mood. The project almost turned into electro electronic acupuncture. Because what they ended up with was embedding a microchip to put out a signal which affected certain areas. They were able to determine that you can cause a behavioral change. One of the projects was called the Phoenix Project, which had to do with Vietnam veterans. We had a chip that we called the Rainbow Chip. This chip will actually cause extra adrenaline flow. Okay. It says um even in Well, you know what? Let me keep going. I'm keep reading that scripture out. It says um there are 250,000 components in the microchip including a tiny lithium battery. I fought them over using lithium as a battery source, but NASA was doing a lot with lithium at the time, and it was the going thing. I had talked to a doctor at Boston Medical Center about what that concentration of lithium in the body could do if the chip broke down. He said that you would get a boil or grievous sore. It's, um, was that Revelation 16? No. Revelation 16 and 2. And the first went and poured out his vial upon the earth, and therefore a noisome and grievous sore upon the men which had the mark of the beast, and upon them that worshiped the image. Mm. 
She's you can't make this up, man. Noisome meaning uh troublesome, injurious, pernicious, destructive, baneful. Properly refers to effects. And we just read sore. So, you know, you can't, you would get a boil or grievous sore. <laughs> you, you can't make this up, man. All right. A wound, especially a wound producing a discharge pus. As the development moved along, I left the project and came back as a consultant several times. I was used in many meetings as an expert witness in regards to the uses of the microchip. I was in one meeting where it was discussed, how can you control a people if you cannot identify them? People like Henry Kissinger and CIA folk attended these meetings. As we develop this microchip as the identification chip became the focal point, there were several things which, you know what? I want to do a quick search. So Henry Kissinger, which it says um, is an American politician, diplomat, and geopolitical consultant who served as United States Secretary of State and National Security Advisor under the presidential administrations of Richard Nixon and, and, and Gerald Ford. So amongst those that, uh, you know, passed laws and write laws into effect these this chip is talked about okay so you know it's talked about amongst the president as well and again these things are these, these things come down from the elites you know these orders so it says in CIA and CIA folk attended these meetings as we develop this microchip as the identification chip became the focal point there were several things that were wanted. They wanted a name and an image, a picture of your face, social security number with the international digits on it, fingerprint identification, physical description, family history, address, occupation, income, income tax information, and criminal record. Now, this part portion stuck out to me because you have something today. Which is is actually it was actually supposed to be implemented this year, October first, but it was pushed back to um next year, October it was supposed to be implemented this year, October first, twenty twenty, but it was pushed back to October first, twenty twenty one. And it's called the uh the real ID. I just want to bring out a point with this real ID. Um, damn, I can't remember where it's at. Okay, yeah, it says right here, this real ID, which is again, right now, and they're basically saying that it's um optional. You know, and it's for, of course, they, they say it's for your benefit. You know, 
But um, one thing I noticed is that it says IDs and driver's license as identification. No, no, which one was it? Well, I can't exactly, I can't remember where it sat in the article, but um, what I noticed about the real ID is that it's supposed to um encompass all your, when you look into it, it's, it encompasses all your um IDs. So like, for example, when you go, like the, last week I went to go um renew my license and to renew your license, you need three forms of ID. It could be your license, which is one form, your credit card, which is the second form, and your third form can be something like a birth certificate or social security number, you know? But with the real ID, that encompasses all of that, you know? You don't need multiple forms of ID now. That real ID is, uh, you know, is, is the... Uh, Is a is you know the uh I don't know I don't know I can't think of a word for it but that real ID is the uh substitution for everything you know and it's again we see that it's a segue to the RFID chip so it says social security number with the international digits on it fingerprint identification physical description family history address occupation income tax information and criminal record. And on top of that, when you go into the scriptures, one of the origins for the word uh, karagma, which the word mark goes into karagma, which we, we always go into it, all right? The, mark go, the word mark goes into karagma, a physical insertion. Karagma goes into the word karax. Karax means what? A policy. How is going to be inserted? Karax goes into the word grapho. Grapho mean, meaning... The writings. All right, so all your information is going to be in, um, encompassed in this one little tiny chip. I've been in 17 One World meetings where this has been discussed. Okay, he calls it all, both small and great. Meetings in Brussels, Luxembourg, tying together the finances of the world. There are bills before Congress right now that will allow them to inject a microchip in your child at the time of birth for identification purposes. The President of the United States of America, under the Immigration Control Act of 1986, Section 100, has the authority to deem whatever type of identification is necessary, whether it be an invisible tattoo or electronic media under the skin. So I think you have to look at the facts, folks. This is not coming as some big shock. As some big shock, the paving has been done ahead of time. Okay? The paving has been done ahead of time. So Esau is showing you. Okay? This article is a clear, concise... Um. It's, it's clear and concise that the RFID chip is the mark of the beast. There's no way around that. Now, I found this site here. It says, uh, human microchipping, the benefits and downsides. Now, we, understanding that this chip is going to cause you to eat a missile, We want to look at the downsides. Okay. So it says disadvantages. Of course, there are various disadvantages to implement in, to implanting RFID chips as well. There are health concerns as well as privacy concerns. Will we still have control over our bodily privacy? Will we, will we be able to remove the implants ourselves? How will we know if our chips are being hacked? 
RFID chips may pose a threat to our health. There are many different digital identification systems and we use many different cards. We have a credit card, an ID card, a medical aid membership card, a public transport card, and so on. We, will prob we will probably also need to implant more than just one RFID chip. A potential problem with these chips is that they don't always stay in their place. You know, and this um, is somewhat is similar to the vaccines because here it is, you know, just like um, particular shots that they give you when you're a kid, you need a shot for this, you know, to rid your body from this disease and a shot from that disease and a shot from this disease. Then you got to get, you know, shot to update the other shot that you took three years ago, or eight years ago. So that's just going to be how this chip is, man. And then the chip. We was, you know, brothers is uh, having spiritual talk, going into talking about how to chip, you know, you know how Esau is. You need a particular, uh, just like today, you might need a particular card to go there, you know, or particular access card to you go here. That's just going to be how that chip is going to be, you know. So it says. We have a credit card, an ID card, a medical aid membership card, and a public transport card, and so on. We would probably also need to implant, implant more than just one RFID chip. A potential problem with these chips is that they don't always stay in their place. They sometimes migrate to a different location, making it hard to find them which will be particularly problematic in medical emergencies. Okay? So, you don't take the chip, okay? Point, point blank period, don't take the chip. Some other risks include electrical hazards, averse tissue reaction, which we just read in Dr. Carl Sanders. Okay? You'll get a grievous sore. Infections and incompatibility with medical equipment such as MRI machines. During an MRI scan, patients cannot take anything metal, including microchips. Then there's potential associated with there's potential risk associated with certain pharmaceuticals and the issue of electrosurgical and electromagnetic interference with devices and defibrillators. Research studies from 2007 have indicated that microchips cause cancer in between 1 and 10% of lab animals impl um, implanted with the chips. Even though these cases are too rare to be distinguished from the cancer risk associated with any other implanted medical device, the fact remains that there are various poten uh, potential RFID-related health issues that are currently not adequately studied. Microchips may take away our freedom of choice. With RFID chips, we will always have to be on our very best behavior. And that's already hard for Jake. Jake is already hard. You know, they already got the rock head. They want to do what they want to do. So that's why it's important to weigh the pros and the cons. The scriptures say in Proverbs 2 and 11, discretion, will, discretion shall preserve thee to keep thee from the evil men, from the way of the evil men, roughly paraphrasing. So it says, no more riding a bus for free, driving a little faster than we should, making up an excuse for why we got to, late, to work late, in order to serve the public better, the service providers need to have more access to more information which can also severely limit our freedom. For instance, we will be able to choose. Uh, Slaki. For instance, will we be able to choose to pay with cash money or our credit card, or will will we be forced to pay with our R RFID implant? We already know the answer to that. What if receiving microchips becomes mandatory for say? Being able to apply for a job, get insurance, being admitted to school. 
how will we be able to remove the implant? And the scriptures say he calls it. Okay, that word cause goes into the Greek. Um, meaning he makes, you know, he forms this. So Esau is going to form this world to where you have to take the chip. If you want to still survive, you want to still eat. This is pretty obvious. Chips may make us prime targets for people with bad intentions. Okay. As in the case with most new techno technological developments, RFID chips are also sensitive to exploitation because they contain so much important information, they become... They can become a prime target for people with bad intentions, such as hackers. Imagine the information on your chip not only being readable, but also writable. That would mean your data could be corrupted, wiped, or copied. You know, which makes me think of the scripture where it says, that's why we got to store up our treasures in heaven. Because anything in this place is, is, um, Temporal. Your money's in the bank. Somebody hacks the bank. Now your money's gone. All right. Like the brother Club said, people, you know, they rave over the how much money they got in the bank, but really those are just numbers on the screen. Those numbers can change at any moment. You get that chip, your life, your life is your life is in doubt now. So how much more when you get that chip? Okay. Then it says we we really we need to think about who really benefits from microchip from human microchipping. Yes, RFID chips could make our lives more efficient, but we should actually ask ourselves who really benefits from human microchipping. It will make it very easy for Big Brother to continuously track where we are. And what we do, how we do it, and who, and whom we're doing it with. This could be very valuable information for large corporations and governments. RFIDs could enable government, security companies, or the police to electronically frisk citizens via chip readers placed in public places or along roadsides in pedestrian areas, etc., RFIDs can basically be scanned from a few feet away by anyone who has a reader. This is a, a legitimate concern that requires stringent privacy controls and security measures. So the point was made, the chip, the RFID chip is the mark of the peace in which you should not take. So with that, Shalom to the elect.